Lab 5, Slinky Levitation. In this lab, I will discuss the purpose, specific physics principles, the process, the computational model, and then discussion questions. The purpose of this lab is to observe the motion of a falling slinky, create a computational model that shows this motion, and then understand the physics behind this visually interesting concept. Let's watch the video of the slinky being dropped. As you can see in the video, when a slinky is dropped, the bottom of the slinky does not change in position until the top of the slinky reaches it. I tracked the estimated position of the center of mass and tracker and found the graph of position versus time, which is shown here. I will discuss this graph in comparison to the predicted graph later, after I discuss the computational model. Before I talk about the computational model, here are some important physics principles that one must understand, including the momentum principle, energy principle, and also the formulas for finding information about the spring, such as kinetic and potential energies and the period of oscillation. In order to understand this concept of levitation, I made a model in vPython. Instead of making the slinky one spring, I created a model that consisted of identical particles that were each connected by identical springs. I first made specific initializations in the code, such as a spring constant, mass, rest length, and even added a purple ball to represent the hand and a green floor so the slinky will stop falling. Then I made n masses to represent the slinky. For each mass, I determined the distance between it and its nearest neighbors. From this distance, I can determine the amount of stretch or compression for each little spring. The total force on each mass is the sum of the forces from the two springs connecting to it plus the gravitational force. A drag force was also added in order to make the slinky's motion more apparent. Since the masses of the top and bottom each only have one spring, they were modeled in separate parts of the code. After finding the force, I used the momentum principle to find the new momentum. With the updated momentum, I then found the new position of each mass by saying that the change in position is equal to velocity, which is also the moment over its momentum over its mass, and then I multiplied by delta t. That is the basis of the code. In the running code, you can see that the bottom of the slinky does not move until the top of the slinky falls and compresses. The predicted model and observed model differ greatly in the beginning time interval, yet after that they are approximately the same function. The large difference in the beginning time interval can be explained because I may started tracking the motion of the center of mass and tracker too soon, while the spring was still slightly oscillating right before it was dropped. Now, why does this happen? Why does the slinky appear to levitate for about 0.3 seconds after it is dropped? Gravity is not the only force acting upon it. There is also restorative force pulling downward on the top and upward on the bottom of the slinky, which causes the top of the slinky to fall faster than the bottom of the slinky. The restorative force, the force that is trying to get the spring back to its rest position, does not go away until the spring returns to its rest position, which is when the top of the slinky meets the bottom. And that is also the moment that the bottom of the slinky falls. Now, what if a tennis ball was attached to the end of the slinky? Would the motion of the slinky change? Would the bottom of the slinky fall when the top is dropped? The same thing happens with the ball attached to the end of the slinky as what happens in the previous situation where there is no ball. It still appears to levitate for the same reasons. The ball causes the slinky to stretch a further distance and therefore the restorative force is stronger, causing it to have the same levitation effect. In conclusion, the levitation of this falling slinky can be explained through physics principles. This concludes Lab 5.